Since I was eight, I loved to dance. I remember in the house almost every day, I would be jumping and spinning around. It was like I was in a completely different world. But I would never talk about it at school because it was far from the norm for a boy to be dancing. I remember seeing other kids being teased for the smallest things like the shoes they wore, the videos they watched, the clothes they had. And so there was just no way I would just go out and say that I loved to dance. But this fear affected me outside of school too. I remember being at weddings and parties and not being able to go to the dance floor and dance like everyone else because I cared too much what people thought of me. In middle school, I didn't dance. I did sports like soccer, which was a bit more common among my peers. And it felt good because it was respected, but it wasn't enough for me. It didn't give me artistic freedom or a form of expression. It didn't make me feel like myself. It wasn't until high school that I took actual dance technique classes, and there were very few male dancers at my school, and I was the only one in my class section, so as you could expect, I was pretty nervous. But class after class, I began to warm up to my classmates and my incredible teacher, and within a year, I choreographed and performed a solo piece. I went from not being able to dance in front of anyone to dancing in front of an audience full of staff, students, and parents. It was a life-changing experience and an experience I want others to have. Not because it changed my technique, but because it changed my mindset. Before, all I would think about was what people thought of me when I danced. Would they ridicule me, make fun of me, laugh, discourage me? But after that performance, I learned to dance for myself. Dance also has incredible physical lifelong benefits. It improves your heart health, posture, mobility, and flexibility. But it also has incredible mental benefits as well. In a study presented by Albert Einstein College in 2003, Researchers had elderly participants engage in 11 different physical activities, including golf, swimming, and tennis. But what the researchers found was that only dance significantly reduced the patient's risk of dementia because dance requires a unique mental effort and social interaction. But what I find most amazing about dance is its ability to improve social skills, self-esteem, and confidence. In a study by the University of Akron in 2011, researchers looked at public schools that had recently introduced um, dance programs to their curriculum. And what they found was that shortly after they were introduced, standardized test scores in math and English increased, and the students became more engaged in extracurriculars and their academics. They also became more accepting of their peers, which in this society is vital. But despite the many benefits we see from dance, there are many reasons why many people aren't able to dance. And one of those issues is because of accessibility. Not all schools offer dance programs because many school districts face the effects of slashed budgets. And a lot of times because of slashed budgets, dance programs and performing arts programs in general are cut from the curriculum. And this leaves fewer opportunities for at-risk youth who may need them the most. So what can we do to help resolve this issue? We need to advocate for our public schools to receive the funding and support that they need to provide programs for their students. But we can also get involved with our local studios who often do outreach programs for public schools as well. Whether it's by enrolling in their classes or resharing their social media content or donating, we are doing our part in supporting them so that they can provide programs for their communities. But there are also many reasons that people choose not to dance. And that is because of social acceptance. Dance is considered quite far from the norm. And unfortunately today, society often sees anything that differs from the norm to be inherently bad. Male dancers are often ridiculed and criticized for engaging in dance because it's considered a feminine activity, 
and male and female dancers often experience instances of bullying, body shaming, discrimination, and disrespect, just to name a few. But what can we do to help resolve these social issues? First, as a society, we need to be more open-minded. We need to let go of the social norms that we hold so closely. And we need to be more accepting of each other. And we also need to be brave. By dancing, we stand up to defy the norm, and we stand up against prejudice and inequality. I hope that after hearing this, you'll be more encouraged to dance, to start, or to keep going at it. And if you haven't started yet, it is never too late. And if you find yourself doubting yourself, I'm here to tell you that I believe in you and that you can do it. Dancing has changed my life, and it can change yours too. And no matter what people say, anyone of any race, gender, sexuality, income level, or body type can dance. And by dancing together, we can change society forever. Thank you. Thank you.